In today's video, I'm going to demonstrate how to CAD design and CNC machine these Lucky 7 dominoes from raw aluminium rectangular stock. Hey guys, welcome back to the Design, Creativity and Technology channel. My name's Aaron. In today's video, I'm going to show you the processes that I went through to uh, from my CAD design uh, to my cam, camming this model and to CNC machining it. Now, the model I'm demonstrating today, guys, is my Lucky 7 Domino. It's a nice, simple little item that you can put on your keychain and take with you uh, everywhere you go. Now, to demonstrate this, guys, I'll just turn the sketches off for a second. You can see the model here. I'm going to roll back my timeline all the way back here, just so you get an idea of how I did this today. Um, and I'm going to come up here, and when I go to my first one, I need to turn all my sketches on for you to see this. So quite simply, I drew a rectangle okay, on the ground plane. You notice here I'm in Z-Up. I always design in Z-Up. And in my basic rectangle, I put in uh, four fillets on each corner. Uh, I then extruded that model up six millimeters, which is just under quarter, quarter of an inch. The next thing on the top plane there, on the top face, I drew this uh, geometry here. It's roughly a slot with uh, three millimeters wide with three millimeter uh, radius uh, circles on the end. I extrude cut that down into the model and then I applied a fillet feature which gave me those nice round curved faces. Moving on from there I created a series of uh, points on the top face in a sketch and as you know you can create a point because points live up here in the sketch icon tool and they live right there. Now I created all these points because this one design could do my full set of dominoes uh, just by simply copying it and moving it on I could uh, turn on and activate more holes as I chose to do it. Next thing guys was I put a hole up the top in one of those points because that's where my keychain loop is going to go. Then I drew a sphere and another sphere. Now because this is a lucky seven I'll have six on one side and one on the other and then I just did a rectangular pattern to get the rest of the holes here. Now as you know, dominoes go up to six and uh, I put on nine points because I wanted to utilize those other points when you're doing uh, numbers like threes and uh, fives and etc. Uh, like I said, guys, these were just these were suppressed. These were two chamfers that I put top bottom and I've decided not to go with that in cam and just uh, do a tool path using a chamfer offset. Uh, in my machine today, guys, you can see I did a rectangular array here in line and that was when I did this, this, this allowed me to put these in the dual vice setup. And if I just uh, generate the toolpath, you can see that here. And you can see my machining strategy where I made my G54, which is my work offset to the top left corner here. And I could go into my setup here, guys. And once I had that figure, I could go to my aluminium or aluminum merchant, however you want to say it. Uh, and I could tell them what size stock I needed and they would cut that to size for me and I could put it straight into my dual by set up and machine it. Okay, so let me show you how to cam this now, okay, and the strategy that I use. So the first thing we want to do here, guys, is create a setup. So setup lives up in here. And we want it, the first thing I need to do is tell my machine where is my work offset going to be. Now, most of the time I always used to machine in the center. I always used to use the, sorry, I used to always set up the origin in the center. Now, on my machine at home, I like to use that back left corner on the fixed jaw of the vise. Not the sliding, not the movable jaw, but the fixed jaw. Okay, from here now, we need to set up our stock size, and I'd like to give it 3.5 on the bottom, and 0.5 on the top offset. And we'll just leave one set up there, standard on the outside. And we click OK, all right? Now, so the first thing we need to do, guys, I'm going to do a two, it's going to be a face, sorry. I'm going to come into my tools and I'm going to use my Skyfire library, pick up my tool one, which is my shell mill. Click OK. The next strategy I want to do, I want to bore that hole out. So I'm going to go over here, I'm going to go 2D, 2D bore. Go to my tool library, Skyfire library, and this little tool is going to be a 3 mil end mill and I believe I shoved that in tool six. Now I'm limited with my machine at home. It's only got eight, eight pocket tool changer. And theoretically I can only use seven of them because tool eight is my probe. 
Unfortunately, with the AdTech Chinese controller, I can't work outside of that. So I'm limited and I'm stuck. And it's a bit of a pain in the bum, actually, to be honest with you. Um, so every time I do a job, I've nearly got a tool up to do that job. And uh, it's not, how would you say, not very productive. I need to select what I'm doing over here now. So I'm gonna to go to the next tab here, and I need to pick the geometry that I wish to do. It's gonna be that hole there. As I move over to the third tab, it's gonna ask what heights. So I want it to, to top height will be hole top, bottom height will be stock bottom. So that tool will bottom all, bore all the way down through. Click OK. Okay, my next strategy will be a 2D adaptive clearing. And 2D adaptive and can come over here to my selector tool, my SkyFire library. And this is going to be tool seven. It's gonna be a six mil flat end mill. Once again, move to the second tab, select the geometry that you want to machine. It's going to be that one. And I'm pretty happy with everything else there. I'm gonna click, if I go to the third, uh, third tab and fourth tab, it tells stock to leave. So I'm gonna leave uh, 0.5 on the wall and 0.5 on the floor. And that's just a default and it's a, sort of a happy thing for me, so I'm gonna leave that one there. There's my adaptive clearing. Let's do the contour now, because now I wanna clean that up. So 2D contour. I'm gonna leave the same tool in there, and I'm gonna click that geometry. And this time, I wanna make sure that it's still get, it's doing climb milling, and that's what I want. And, and I'm pretty happy with that. Click OK. I'm just using those defaults that I've set up originally. Uh, next, guys, I'm gonna come in with a ball nose mill and machine all these, okay? So this will be a 3D machining strategy. So 3D, scallop, pick up my tool, Skyfire, three mil ball, click OK, pick those geometry. Now, I'm just gonna click these boundaries here and Fusion will go, okay, you want me, to be, want me to stay inside that boundary and I'll machine everything below that, okay? I'm just gonna click OK and Boom, pretty quick. There we have it there. There's one more tool path I need to do, and that is the cleanup, okay? So that's the, the 2D uh, contour on the outside. Now, because I deleted those chamfers, otherwise I could have used the 2D chamfer, but I'm not gonna worry about that. I'm just gonna use 2D contour on this. I'm gonna come over and pick up my tool, which is gonna be a spot drill. Now this spot drill is starting to get a little bit worn, and you can see it on the machine surface, and I need to change that. I think it's seen better days. So I'm gonna click that outside edge and that edge there. I'm gonna come over here now, come up here a little bit, and see my tip, my chamfer, you have to have that selected. Because I've picked a spot drill, Fusion is intuitive, he's gone, oh, hang on a minute, you're using a spot drill, you must want a chamfer with it, and see how it's checked chamfer for me. If yours doesn't, hasn't done that, that's okay, just come and click that box. I like to give it a 0.25 chamfer offset, and here, I'm gonna leave that about 0.6, because my tool's starting to wear, so I'll drop it down a little bit more and put a little bit more of a, so a quarter of a millimetre chamfer on that as well. Uh, up here, guys, I'm gonna change that to climb milling. I find my spot drill in my machine, uh, at, at school on the house, it works fine climb milling, but for some reason at home here, I get a burr, so I like to go conventional milling, and that gets rid of that burr for me. Click OK, and there we have it, guys. Here's my strategy. Now let's. Uh, let's simulate that and I'll give you an idea what it looks like and we'll turn stock on and What I might do here is change it to ceramic so it's a little bit better to view for the video purpose Okay, here we go. I might just minimize that for a second. I'm going to press play and you'll see the face We'll come in now and bore that hole right down You see there's no red lines on the bottom of my Simulation timeline here, which means uh, I don't have any crashes so far, nothing's collided. There's the 2D contour. We're gonna come in now and do that 3D toolpath, and it's just gonna scallop them out, boom. And then the one in the middle, and feed it in. And that chamfer to break that edge, and you can see that little coming in there, beautiful. We should chamfer up that hole now, and there we have it, guys. And this is what I'm gonna show you right now. We're gonna jump over to the mill. So stay with me guys, and I, look, I hope you find it interesting. But for the demonstration on the milling machine, you'll notice that I'm actually not machining one of these, I'm machining nine of them.
Well, overall, I was extremely satisfied with the completed top operations of my Lucky 7 Domino design. In next week's video, I'll show you how to fixture the part in a custom design set of soft jaws and complete operation too. Now, remember last year when I visited Autodesk offices in San Francisco? I actually sent a custom machine set of dominoes over for the Autodesk staff to play with. However, I also made a set for my neighbor's children and they just love them. Until next time, guys, keep spinning those bits and ripping chips.